Let's discuss. Hey everyone, it's Rachel back again with another video and today I will be checking out Tesseract's album War of Being, which I have covered two of the singles on my channel, the title track and the gray. The gray is definitely my favorite of what I've heard so far, which has been only two songs. There is a lot left to check out. I know Legion is being released as a single, so this will be where I check that out. I will leave the full song in since I do not have that on the channel. I am really excited to see what my favorite moments will be both vocally and instrumentally. Dan's vocals sound insane on these singles, so I'm very excited. I will link all of their promotional links, any sort of physical copies or merch that you can get for War of Being. I will link in the description. They also rolled out a game with this release. All that sort of stuff will be in the description. Other than that, I'm going to stop talking. We are going to get straight into it. Where are we going?
that is gorgeous. Big finish. Maybe. <laughs> okay. Into Echoes. Okay. After some autoplay issues, Echoes. Putting the working on that snare. Those vocals.
really feeling all the drumming so far. Is it a very long outro? Oh. Gorgeous vocals. Again. <laughs> Probably a reoccurring event on this album. Okay. Into what was my favorite of the two singles I've heard so far. The Grey. Mm. I love this intro so much. This is one I have on the channel, so I'll... I love the delivery on gratification. Oh, and the one after it has a music video I'll need to pull up. Or some kind of visuals. I'm gonna do that.
in hell. That would be the contender I have right now with the gray. I like the first two tracks enough, but nothing as much as the gray so far. Then this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, my computer decided to do updates in the middle of my video and I had to go to a show before it came back on. So now we're going to finish up the album. I'm wearing obviously a different outfit because it is no longer the same day, which normally I do all of my album in one sitting. So I've went back and re-listened to all of the album up to Tender, which is where we're at now. And now we're going to continue on our way. War of Being is after this one, which I have on the channel. So I'll chop that one up. But otherwise, we're going to get that one done and the final three tracks on the album as well as Tender right now. So onward we go. Still so many 
Ooh, those vocals back there give me chills. Ooh, that's gonna be a favorite. Title track is next, which I... Intro was unreasonably hard. Yeah, that bird always gets me. <laughs> I love that melody so much. Huge vocal track. Sirens. Three more tracks. That
was kind of expecting that to drop all crazy contrast. I like that this has kept overall, it's like pretty tame. Even the parts where it like builds up to. Got me curious what the last two will sound like. Hmm. No screaming, I think, on that one? Or very minimal, if so. Like the sound of that intro? We grooving. It comes to me so vividly with the brush strokes. Mechanical mess. Dangerous and without a plan. So silently come to me. 
where is this one gonna go? I want to groove down. Not yet, but you know. <laughs> With that intro. Sounds so good. These vocals. Massive vocal performance once again. This album really. Oh. Groove down.
tip. Mm. I'm glad that part was there. <laughs> and two. The closer? Yes. Sacrifice. Sound like good there. that base.
got some more groove down. really like where this is going. This will be a standout track for me for sure. Big fan of that. Is it real, however? Slow outro. I think this was like a nine or ten minute song, so it's a big closer. I mean, War of Being was like a ten minute track as well. Gotta be sure. 
Okay. <laughs> Tesseract, War of Being. Let's discuss. This is one of those albums that is definitely a lot to process on first listen, though my favorite tracks still stand out to me. I think they opened up the album in a phenomenal way. Natural Disaster will certainly be one of my favorite tracks on here. The Grey is still going to be up there as well. It was my favorite of the two singles that I listened to before doing this video, uh, but it's still going to be a favorite track for me. I think everything about that song is just perfect, and we'll kind of get into some of the sounds of the album uh, after going through favorite tracks. Uh, I think the the end of the album uh, tracks that led into the closer sirens and burden kind of burden especially threw me for a loop because the the places where I expected it to drop into something a little bit and same with sirens really actually and burden had me hoping for that groove down the entire time because it opens up with you know so much groove to it the bass is outstanding all of that kind of had me on the edge of my seat waiting for that like very groovy moment and it delivered on it I think it could have gone further into the sound you get from guitar and bass in that intro and stuff and made it just like obnoxiously groovy but this fits really well together as an album and possibly doing something like that might kind of break that a little bit and not be so on Tesseract's brand for them uh, and then Sacrifice was another huge track for me that's going to be a favorite as well I think the outro gives you that time to like process what's just happened a little bit it gives you the, the slow fade out to the album uh, there were maybe a couple of places towards the end of the album in Sirens and Burden even though Burden is a favorite track for me and such a few parts in there which disconnected for me a little bit just like I think with kind of going from an 11 minute track to five to six and a half back to like nine and a half ten uh, there were just a few moments in there that didn't fully encapsulate me but I think going into a band that you know I've I've listened through their discography at this point Altered State and Sondra are definitely my favorite things in their discography uh, and from listening through it though I've only listened to Sondra and Altered State like you know in terms of more plays a lot of the people who are listening to this album and who were anticipating it for release day and stuff probably have listened to this band a ton more for than i have but my take on it is from everything i've heard and such this sounds like an evolution of sound it sounds like uh, my favorite things that i mentioned you know the things that drew me to altered state and sonder i think are present in this album but it has a much different feel to it as well. As I just mentioned, I think it flows really well. It connects together, even though there are some tracks that are surely more energetic and some that take shape of a, you know, a slower form. They are able to utilize Dan's vocals all over the place, whether it be either of the sounds I just talked about or anywhere in between. His vocals can just carry something and give it a lot more character that it than it would have if they, you know, had a vocalist who's not capable of his range or some of the emotion you get in his singing and such. And I think having, you know, the screaming where it's present on this and not too overly done just for the sake of like you know oh let's throw let's make this a heavier track it might appeal more if we do screaming i think that is a big win for me because i like dan screams a lot but the moments that like you know gave me chills and like you know totally grabbed me and brought me into them were moments where the, it was because of the singing when we're talking about vocals so as much as i really like the the points that we got to in some of the the really seamless like you know turnarounds between singing and screaming and some of the, I, I can't I wish I could remember what track but with the longer run times and only having heard it once it was definitely on the second half of the album since the shirt change uh, that it had this one verse that went so so effortlessly singing screaming singing screaming even between just one you know one word in the lyrics uh, I love, love to see that because Dan's voice is certainly one of the things that Tesseract has that's so unique and I think brings something to the tape. The vocal performance on this is just phenomenal. There were multiple parts across the album that did give me those like full body chills and just fully pull you into the music and the song and I think that, that that was a huge draw for me on this record. But they do match that in the, in the instrumentals. They, they bring a lot of 
the sound that Dan brings with his voice, whether it be singing, whether it be lighter, uh, and also some of their melody choices are just so good. Very good. I think a little bit maybe on some of the rhyming that I did here. Some of it felt a little bit forced. If I had to pick something, uh, maybe, you know, some of the slower instrumental parts on the longer run times, they don't grab me as much as certain other bands that do things like that, but there's nothing like, oh, this full track didn't land for me. I have favorites that are across the board with the album in terms of like, you know, listening to it front to back. I wasn't top or bottom heavy for me with favorites uh, pretty nicely dispersed across the record i think uh, it really would just be a matter of uh, you know we're in the the pr the prog genre the sub prog subgenre uh, whatever you want to say there so sometimes when you do get those longer songs same thing happened with to me with some of periphery's album with their longer tracks there were parts that just didn't click for me as much but where that happened on p5 i don't think that it's the same because uh, some of it just felt disconnected from the rest of the album and kind of random whereas everything felt intentional on war of being so it wasn't a matter of like what is this doing here it's not really like working for me everything clicked together really nicely so even on the kind of note for something that was like you know one of the cons for me on the album it still has a pro to it so i think that that's a positive thing when it comes to soundscapes, atmosphere, all of that is incredibly well done as well. I think the moments where Dan's voice in, on the singing sides, singing side of things bring that sort of chill inducing beautiful sound. They do a great job at matching that with their soundscapes, uh, with the, the instrumentals that you have to accompany those parts or sometimes just on their own to kind of drive that further. All of that sounded incredible to me. With this band, something interesting is uh, I mentioned Sonder being one of my favorites, and I had listened to it a bunch before I found out actually that the drums were programmed, and I believe on this album they are not. And a lot of times when a band programs their drums and you, you listen through, it's not so difficult to pick out but i feel like if i go back and listen to sonder and i listen to this it'd still be very hard for me to tell um, but i really did enjoy the drumming on this especially as you get into you know the final three tracks on the album uh, some of the work with the symbols uh, it just adds so much to it it shows off some of their like you know wacky timing and stuff i think uh, when it's you know you're hearing that the symbol whichever one is being used in whichever given part and you're hearing those sort of uh, wacky timed hits on them it it highlights that for you and makes it more evident uh, this is a band where i honestly had no idea until in quite some time later i believe it was on a podcast when courtney laplante did the downbeat podcast with craig reynolds and they just started talking about program drums because the drums on eternal blue were programmed they were done before uh, they didn't have enough time essentially when not to get off on a tangent here but zev joined the band and they just didn't have time to then track all the drums on top of everything else that they had done while being in california and stuff so uh, it, it, they were talking about that and they mentioned tesseract and i was like huh? Uh, and then I looked it up and that's how I really found out. It wasn't through listening to it and being like, oh yeah, the, like that's very evident to me and stuff. So uh, the, while it's not something I would have picked out on Sonder or anything, which is one of my favorite releases from Tesseract, I still love the drumming on this record. I'd like to go back and compare the two now and see if it would be something with the information that I would pick out or not. Uh, but regardless, I think other than kind of disconnecting from some of, and the parts I'm talking about are some of the ones that are more, uh, take a more chill approach, approach, a more lax sound. And there are bands like the Contortionist who are in, you know, the prog realm who have parts like that, that just totally overwhelm me with emotion and stuff. So it's not a matter that it could never click with me. And it also is when you listen to an album, uh, sometimes you're in a different headspace in your first listen, then you'll, you'll realize, and you'll hear one of the same songs you've already heard maybe multiple times, and it will just hit differently for you. And I think that is a possibility here because there was nothing that was like, Oh, I I do not like this. This is not working for me because I don't like the sound of it. I think it's just a lot to take in on first listen front to back. Uh, there are bands who do this length of album that I'm very much into. While I'm newer to Tesseract, of course, my first video was a few years ago now where I, I first checked them out and stuff. But 
I think that I still just, I don't, I haven't listened to them to the point where I would consider myself like a huge Tesseract fan. And that's again, not because of the sound. I think just there's so much music and there's so many discographies I want to go through and stuff and, and really listen and keep on the rotation uh, that I just don't get to in time. And I think it's more of that factoring in than, you know, basically what I just mentioned with the parts of the album that didn't necessarily hit for me. And I think the positive point of that is it's not a song on the album. There are tracks on here. Tender, I don't believe I mentioned as one of my favorite tracks, but it is just gorgeous. And it is one of those tracks that tap into like, the the slower side of things and it works incredibly well for me it's more on like those those longer tracks even a track like bird and i think there were some portions of it that that had what i'm talking about where i just kind of maybe had to prevent myself from zoning out just a little bit but uh, i'm extremely tired i went to a bunch of shows this week and stuff so i think it does have to do with your mindset going into it and stuff like that and i have a bunch of shows coming up too so there's there's no reprieve in sight for a good a good mindset with nothing else going on. Uh, I don't know if it's like that for anyone else on first listens. But yeah, th those are really my thoughts after hearing the album. Legion was also a fantastic track. That was the final single that they used. And I think that that kind of brings some of the more energetic side as well as all the songs that do. I think they also have that that dynamic where there are also spots that are extremely lax. They're very much the opposite of that to play into Tesseract's sound. That's part of their sound and the overall sound of this album. So those are my thoughts on first listen. There's no song that sticks out to me that I don't think I'll put onto the playlist or anything. Maybe the title track just a little bit less because I've listened to it a good number of times now and it has has that wrong, longer runtime, but that's not a track that really relates to what I've said. You know, I I never get bored of that track or any portion of it, so it is possible possible that it will just stay on the rotation as well with the rest of the album. But as I listen more, I'll become more familiar with what my, you know, my real ranking would be in terms of kind of putting tracks over each other and stuff, but I'll definitely need some more listens, which this will be going on the playlist, so let me know what you thought, let me know what your favorite songs are in the description, in the just, yeah, just edit the description and let me know. We are struggling, as always, but uh, we're gonna keep it moving, so let me know what your favorite songs are in the comments, if you agree, disagree with what I said, and all of that. Also, I, I didn't touch on the production of this, but it is immaculate. I think when it comes to any portion of this, the vocals, the, the you know, harmonies, or even sometimes just background, huge soaring vocals that you get, you can hear, pick apart all the details uh, vocally, instrumentally, uh, when it comes to kind of adding to the soundscape of the track, all the little details that are included in there, you're able to pick out really well. It sounds ex extremely clean. So I'm happy on, on that front as well. Those are now my thoughts on the full album. Let me know what you thought in the comments. You can find any link you may need related to my channel in the link tree in the description that will have my Patreon, Twitch channel, Discord server, invite link, all that stuff on Patreon. I offer a bunch of different things. We're voting for 2023 favorites already and we will compile uh, through voting and discussion a finalized list that I'll end up making a video about at the end of the year. So that's what we're preparing for. I make playlist slash mixtapes for tier three that I update every month with 20 to 25 songs based on a list of for fans of that you give me and then I try to make them stuff that you haven't heard of or things that kind of have flown under the radar but are related to what you're looking for uh, on yeah that, I mean that's pretty much it that everything well it's not everything is listed out in there though I won't go through and, and read off all my tiers twitch I do all my streaming on there I do song request streams on Tuesdays and I have various other streams I'll be getting a schedule locked in at the end of the year after all these shows uh, coming up it'll just be easier to do when I'm not constantly having to move it but I will be doing some before then as well so if you want to be notified when I go live see what I'm doing over there on Twitch that link will be there in the discord server where the community is based for my YouTube channel we've got a lot of really wonderful people in there talking about music related topics and topics completely unrelated as well so if you want to come hang out check out the community that'll be there as well as always thank you very much for watching i appreciate it